Welcome back, Cardboard Warriors. How's everybody out there doing today? Hope you're having an awesome day so far. I uh, got an Innistrad Midnight Hunt draft box. So we're going to open a draft box and see how it compares to the set boxes. Unfortunately, uh, I was only able to get one. I'm just really, really strapped right now, um, cash-wise. So I don't have the ability to open a lot of these, but we're going to open one because I, I personally like the draft boxes a lot more than the, the set boxes. But... Strict saving the the set boxes were definitely better, so we'll see if this one holds true with that. Because uh, the set boxes I opened were pretty decent from this set. We'll see if the draft box is as good. They are a little bit bigger than the set boxes now. The new set boxes are smaller, so these are a little bit taller. Closer to this particular set because they put the flip token in every pack in the draft boxes. So uh, these draft boxes are actually quite tall. Um, I mean, not like drastically, but let me see. Here we go. Get another box. We'll compare them. So you can see it's it's a good you know, like maybe a couple centimeters taller or whatever millimeters. I don't know. Um, yeah. So <laughs> moving on enough about that so check out the description below there's a lot of good links to sales on these on amazon if you use those links uh i do get a few cents commission it really really helps the channel a lot of other good links down there save your money get your cash back on all your purchases uh oh japanese they're japanese all right full tabs and they're gonna be backwards all right so we got our flip token first our regular token which is day and night token we got our beautiful land and a mask of the grizzle brand for our first rare in Cummins and up on the back. All right, so I don't think there is anything fancy in the Cummins in this set at all. So we'll probably get through this box fairly quick. Flip token, bird token, our swamp, beautiful overgrown farmland. We'll keep track of the, the rare lands there and the mythics, of course. All right, and there we go. So, yeah, not a lot of people have been. Actually, very few people have been using the links in the description there. Insect token. Land. Malevolent Hermit with the Benevolent Geist on the back. So, cool little card. And uh, so, I haven't been getting a lot of... Oh, we got some damage in there? Or just... I guess they just look kind of rough on the top. It's just... Uh, I don't know if that's coming through. But, yeah, the tops of the cards have just been really, really garbage for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I've been putting together like common and uncommon play sets to sell on my eBay of uh, different sets over the past few years. And yeah, I have to be very careful because a lot of the commons and uncommons have damage on them. Mountain Sludge Monster. All right. So have you guys been experiencing that? You've been getting a lot of damaged cars in your boxes lately? Let me know in the comments below. Beast Token Island. Ghoul, Har Ghoul Colors Harvest. Okay, nothing exciting there. Keep going. So far, nothing really spicy at all. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn out like the collector's box I got. Tree Poke, First Foil, Falcon Earth Perforator, Swamp, and Gisa. Gisa is amazing. I'm shocked that it's still just not getting any respect at all. This card is great, especially in like sealed and stuff. Huge. But... I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Is there something wrong with it that I'm not catching aside from the four casting costs? <laughs> uh, advertising, come on. All right, Island, and then Sereth, the Viper's Fang. No mythics yet at all. What's going on with this box? All right, keep going. So yeah, not, not hardly anybody's really taking advantage of the links in the description, and all that stuff is legit and good stuff. Uh, Forced, Siphon Insight. Wow. Start off really, really bad here. Yeah, everything in there is legit. It's all real. I use it all. Um, it's the credit card I actually use. The link is down there. Another fucking wrath pit fighter this time. Uh, what was our fucking wrath? Was our foil, but it was the perforator. Coming. All right, moving along. Day and night token mountain. Meat Hook Massacre, the most expensive card in the set still, uh, or well, now it is. Uh, I took over the spot from uh, Renin 7. Renin 7 is now the second most expensive card. This is now the top card in the set, and for good reason. It's really, really versatile. Good card. 
Um, yeah, I see that one being in a lot of decks for quite a while. So, yeah. Go in here. More flip tokens. Yay, human. All right, next foil, just a common. Planes and unnatural growth. That one had a little hype at the beginning, but it hadn't really turned into much. Delver of Secrets. This one, uh, because of this printing, has gone down a lot, but I expect it to kind of jump back up in a year or two. That's such a good card. Such a good card. All right. Last pack of stack number one. Third of the way through the box. We got the most expensive card in the set so far, so we're doing all right, I guess. It's oh, There's our foil rare, Storm the Festival. Could have been a little better on the foil rare. Slogurk, the Overslime, of course. Get lots of Slogurks in this set. Yeah. Zombie token, full common, and yeah, forest, and Briar Bridge Tracker for our next rare. Feel the Ruin, good uncommon. They did put some really, really good uncommons in here with the Field of Ruin and the Delver of Secrets, a couple other really good spicy uncommons. So they did a good job with this set. Katilda, Dawnheart Prime. I like the showcase borders too. Uh, they look pretty cool. A lot better than the D&D ones, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Oh god, oh god, we're messing up the pack here. Trying to bend cards, trying to drop stuff. It's really early, I'm not awake yet. Forest, Curse of Leeches, and nothing else. All right. So it looks like, just my first impression here, I think the set boxes might be a little bit more spicy in this set too. Ooh, Arlen, there's the third most expensive card in the set. Here we go. And our second Mythic, so we're not getting a lot of Mythics, but we are getting really great Mythics, so not bad at all. Um, Arlen is great. I, I, the second I saw Arlen, I was like, wow, that's a really powerful Planeswalker, and it's only a four drop, so it's still usable. Uh, really, five drop or more, forget it. Rockfall Veil vale for our second rare land. Uh, yeah, anything Planeswalker that's more than five drop, unless it's... Uh, like Ugin or something that's just incredibly broken and worth building a whole deck around. Then, uh, <laughs> and, uh three drop planeswalkers are pretty much always gonna be good. Triskaidekafile, Triskaidekafile. I think they got that. I think I might have gotten it. Oh my god, that might be the first time I got it. And I stumbled. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, the Arlen, definitely a good card. I think it's. I think that one's probably gonna find its home in a couple decks. We'll see what happens. All right, Florian, our next rare. And, yeah. Tell you what, this Disturb mechanic is so good. I love the Disturb mechanic. I think that was a great idea for the flip cards, being able to cast it after it, you know, cast it normally, and then when it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard for a second cost, and it's a second creature. It just really, really helps in the late game. Because, uh, especially, you know, early game, you're... you're your creature's going to get wiped out pretty quick by your opponent if they're running a lot of removal. Slaughter Specialist. Uh, if your opponent's a Slaughter Specialist and killing everything. So, <laughs> it really helps with that, uh, be able to, you know, not just feel like you're wasted a card because you cast a one or two drop and then it instantly gets killed and you're just like, ah, great. Primal Adversary for our next Mythic. So, we're up to three Mythics now. All right. And a little over halfway through the box. What are you guys thinking of this set? Let me know in the comments how you're liking it. Old Stick Fingers. I think it's a really good set. Um, I think it's only half a set, though. <laughs> you can tell it's pretty obvious that they, they really put some... some uh, 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 just filler cards in here. Double Dollars Huntmaster, not one of the filler cards. One of the really good cards in this in the set. Oh, no, the Huntmaster, eh, he's all right. It's the Topolar himself is awesome. But uh, you can tell they put a lot of filler in here because they tried to basically make one set into two sets with this one and the Crimson Vow that's coming out next. Um, Light of the Night, cool card. And, yeah, it's just definitely seems like they, they tried to, you know, put more in here than they really had cards for, I guess. Uh, they should have just left it as one set 
you know, with the inner thread set or maybe combine both of them and then release two sets. Oh, second uh, fall rare. The old Brutal Cathar. It's got the uh, Moon Rage Brute on the back. And then we got a Grafted Identity. And there we go. So I think they should have maybe, you know, combined it. So it's the whole thing's like this whole... Basically, they stole the concept of the movie Underworld. <laughs> it's this uh, vampire versus werewolf thing. A secondary slow gurt. Yeah, we get so many slow gurts. Um, double tap on that. All right. So, yeah, I think they should have just kept it the whole vampires versus werewolves kind of battle thing and just, yeah, made two sets. Oh, Teferi. There we go. Speaking of good four drop planeswalkers, there's the good old new Teferi who slows the sunset for our fourth mythic. So not a lot of mythics, but they're really good ones. We're getting good ones. If we get a Ren and Seven, this will be probably the best draft box you can hope for. So there you go. Still not gonna um, make any profit on this box by any means, or even close to it. Reckless Storm Seeker. Uh, these because the the prices of the chase cards are so low right now. Um, yeah, you're not going to open one of these boxes and make money at the moment. That's pretty much true for everything except Modern Horizons. Bloodline Culling. Uh, Modern Horizons 2 is the only set out right now that you can actually buy a box and bust it open and, and come out ahead on. Uh, full Common. Ludwig Necrogenius for our next rare. I'll play. I better move these commons over because I'm starting to notice that I'm losing my centering because I'm trying not to knock over the commons. So, we'll do that. That way I can try and stay a little more centered for you people. Oops, I forgot there's just pull tab. That one actually open pretty easy without the pull tab. Here, Swamp and Sun Gold Sentinel for our next rear. Alright. Getting down there. What do we got? Five packs left. Alright. So we get the Ren and Seven right in the close. That would be pretty awesome. Um... Ren 7 has proved to be kind of difficult to get by the likes of it. Spider. Fall Uncommon. Planes. And Rim Careless. This guy is actually really, really powerful. Uh, especially for sealed or draft. This guy is a beast. So, look out for him. I have a feeling he might get a little more respect down the road than he's getting right now. Alright. I know, two color cards are always difficult, but a three drop and it's got a ton of ability jadar another really really great creature uh two drop and it gives you a free two two creature every turn you cannot beat that in black especially when you need to sacrifice stuff that's gonna make those uh recto sack decks probably uh even more powerful because you get a free creature to sack every turn Deserted beats for our next rare land so we're up to three of the rare lands and another delver now, that's nice you like seeing that Delver pop up in the uncommon spot. All right. Two packs to go. Are we going to get lucky in the close or are we going to go out with a whimper? Hopefully we get lucky in the close. Fall uncommon. Geist Flame Reservoir. And Devoted Graph Keepers. Actually, that one's actually got some promise to it. There's a, there's a good possibility that one could end up being something in the future as well. I don't know. What do you guys think about the... Some of the commons and uncommons in this set. Obviously, the rares and mythics, we know there's a lot of good power in there, but what are you thinking of the commons and uncommons? Last one, Champion of the Parish. Really good rare. Um, anytime you got a one drop with extra abilities, it's, in a, it's probably going to be worth something down the road. But, anyways, there we go. Wrap up with nothing too exciting. All right, we did get two fall rares. What were they? They were the uh, Brutal Cathar. It's not a bad little card. And the Storm of the Festival. So those were our two fall rares. We only got four Mythics in the whole box. But they were four good Mythics. Um, the Meat Hook Massacre, most expensive card in the set. The uh, Arlen Pax Hope, Primal Adversary, and of course Teferi. Uh, Teferi's dropped a lot lately. Uh, he's not worth much right now. Which, he's a good card, so... I'm not going to speculate on it, because I don't know either way. But uh might be... Yeah, it might be a card worth specking on. And we got only three of the rare lands, the Overgrown Farmland and the Full Art and the Rockfall Vale and the Deserted Beach. So the draft boxes, uh, again in this set, just from opening the one, I don't have a big 
uh, palette to, uh, to really decide from, but just from this one box, it does seem like maybe the set boosters might be the better way to go in this set. Um, you know, just like Strixhaven, I did recommend, even though, you know, personally, I like the draft boosters a whole lot better. Hold up. I'm more into the draft boxes than the set boxes. I'm not a big fan of the set boxes, but with Strixhaven, I will always say take the set boxes over the draft every day of the week. If they're even marginally the close to the same price, you're definitely going to get more value out of the set boxes, and it looks like this set's going to be the same way. And I, I know that's the way that Watsy's trying to go. They're trying to get everybody to stop buying the draft boxes and buy the set boxes because that's their new hot thing that they're, oh, this is such a great idea. Oh, my God. Um, so, uh, you know, it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's always been my motto. And the draft boxes, without them, we can't do drafts. And drafts is one of my favorite formats to play in because it's totally balanced, you know. You don't have to worry about anybody complaining about, oh, he's got better cards than me. That's why he won. Or, oh, uh, you know. He spent more money on his deck. That's why he won. You know, it, it's a, it's it's balanced. It's just everybody starts off with the same chances and the same opportunities, you know, and you, you just kind of use your skills to build the best deck you can with what you get and then play the best you can. So uh, draft is a format that I really think the game shouldn't ever try and get away from. And by them pushing the set boxes instead of the draft boxes, it almost seems like they're trying to push away from the draft format and i think that's a terrible terrible idea i really think we should support the draft format uh but anyways uh, enough about my ranting there check out the description below like i said there's really good sales on amazon on a lot of boxes right now and all those links are in the description um there's just really really good deals on the stuff right now anything under a 100 bucks at the moment because of the price increases and all that and the shipping price increases and everything i don't know that we're going to be able to see too many more boxes under a 100 bucks a box these days and that's a bummer because that's a big jump from last year when you could usually get boxes for around 80 80 to 90 so it sucks um i'm feeling the pain on that one too but uh you know it's just it's it's what's happening so uh let me know what you guys think in the comments below but check out the description there's a lot of good links good prices uh grab some of those up before they go up and uh if you use my links it really helps out the channel a lot my patreon is down there if you want to help support i could really use it right now um my email is down there if you want to talk to me about sponsoring an, op an opening or uh, i have tons of sealed product from the past probably five or six years so hit me up if there's something you want to see open on the channel for you um and uh or if you want to buy singles off me my ebay links down there see what singles i have posted on ebay and uh also my actual address is down there if you want to send me something to open on camera i could definitely use the content right now because i'm struggling to to be able to purchase product to open at the moment so thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you in the next one